a second. Um, the, the, the second thing I want to do is uh, emphasize what Rene was saying earlier. Uh, poverty is not distributed equally. It's not distributed equally among demographic groups uh, across states and communities, but it's also not uh, distributed equally across the lifespan, uh, uh, and she emphasized that. Um, not only are children poorer than adults and the elderly, but the youngest children are the poorest of the children. Uh, and if you think of all the reasons why, parents getting started, not as much time in, in uh, their work histories, a variety of things, it, it's, it's uh, not uncommon for the youngest, for families to be poorest when they have um, the youngest children. How irrational is it then that it's actually the period of life we invest in least publicly? Um, about 80% of American public expenditures on kids is for K-12 education. Um, and with all the complaints we have about K-12 education, it's a great equalizer. Uh, K-12 education, because of the public investments, closes the gap between low income and, and high income kids. Uh, it is the public investment in all families' children that uh, make low, uh, uh, public education a force for equity uh, over time. God knows a lot to do to improve that, but that's the case. Um, we are dramatically undercapitalized in the stage of life that is most influential. And what we have to do is shift from thinking about the only universal platform that we have for kids, which is the uh, pediatric and primary preventive care system, which is now nearly universal because of the Affordable Care Act. We have to switch from thinking about that as as only or primarily a health, physical health system to the platform in which developmental and family services are also delivered, in my opinion. So um, th I, that puts a special burden on pediatricians, but pediatricians have to change from uh, being uh, health care providers to being small business operators of multi-service uh, systems in a certain way. And, uh, and the reason I say this is I spent 20, 25 years of my life trying to uh, get things like uh, nurse home visiting and early head start and child care passed. Um, but if we wait for another 20 or 25 years, we're going to lose many generations of infants and toddlers. So what I hope we can do is pay the marginal costs of serving all infants and toddlers in a more powerful and developmentally nutritious way by changing the nature of pediatric practice. Now that's easy for me to say because I'm not a pediatrician. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I am fully aware of the enormous challenges that have faced uh, colleagues in pediatrics to do this, but I think it requires a kind of a fairly significant rethink. And um, there are lots of things that can be done to do that, and I'd again be happy to describe some of those. 